All right, thank you, Larry. We are on the Gulf Coast of Florida at Raymond James Stadium here in Tampa. With the echoes of cannon blast still ringing in our ears from the north end zone, the Bucks were introduced a moment ago, and they are all set as their guys will do battle with the Chicago Bears. They'll bring it back to just about the 25, call it the 24-yard line. carry number one for Jordan Howard takes this up just short of the 30 but he was able to avoid that earlier tackle nice move he'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run and it's second and four let's talk a little football 101 here because one of the keys to advancing the ball downfield success on first down huge difference as we know between second and four and second and eight and nine They go with Howard again. Oh, he's got some breathing room. They give him 13 yards there on the play and a fresh set of downs. Another nice run there by Jordan Howard. And, and when we talk about fresh legs, how about 2016? Jordan Howard, the number two rookie rusher. Heck, the number two rusher in the NFL <laughs> behind another rookie, Ezekiel Elliott. In the first three weeks of the season, he only had 12 carries. So once week four hit, really found his groove. Now Glennon. He's got a man open. It's Cameron Meredith. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. Back-to-back -back nice gains. That one for 14 yards and another first. Play fake here on first down. The catch is made by Kendall Wright. And he's going to get this inside the 30. Now we're going to get a stoppage. It appears to be an injured bear on the field. While the trainers take a look, we'll step aside. Seven. And plays like that really hurt play calling. They had a really nice gain on the previous play, but gave about half the yardage back on the sack. Excellent pressure up front. Nowhere to go with the football. Down he goes. Let's go. Out of the gun. They'll look to throw. And Miller with it over the middle. And he'll work it inside the 30 to the 29-yard line. That catch good for five. It's third down. Not a big window to throw. Coverage wasn't too bad there. Yeah, they had him under wraps pretty well, but somehow able to muscle his way open and catch the ball. And on third down, a nickel formation here defensively. Here we go now. Three, 19. Looking to throw. Able to get away. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. William Golston. He's the one that gets him down. It'll be a loss of five, and it'll bring up fourth down. Now the ex-Buccaneer, Connor Barthon, for the field goal try. He's going to need a little mustard on this one. It'll be a 51-yard attempt. And this one will not get there. It's off to the left anyway. It's no good, and this will remain a scoreless game. 
Well, that opening drive looked good for a moment there, but they'll wind up being turned away thanks to the missed field goal. And those especially hurt when you come into a game on the road. You're trying to get things to go your way early, and now you suffer a setback right out of the gate. And yeah, because they couldn't hit the long field goal, they are set up nicely offensively at the 41, first and 10. And a first carry here for Charles Sims. And he will be brought down at about the 43 that time. Give him a couple on the carry there, second and eight. Well, if the coaching staff's doing a good job upstairs, they'll file away what they just saw from the defense right there. They sold out to stop that running play. I'd say keep that in mind. They want to try that again, go play action, hit them over the top. They'll run it again with Sims. And he'll take this for about four up to the 46-yard line. But if you're a football guy, that's a pretty run because everyone is in sync right there. Obviously, a guy carrying the ball, but how about the people up front? Leverage, athleticism, they created some nice space for him. The Bears have put an extra defender in the secondary on third down. Yep, they're in the nickel. From the gun, Winston. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back, complete. And he's going to have a first down as he's brought down at the 44-yard line. It's a 10-yard pickup, and it moves the chains. They go play action here on first down. And that is incomplete here. I hope I don't sound too rah-rah on that one, but that's the exact right throw. Either your receiver gets it or no one gets it. Give him a lot of credit for being really precise with it. Got rid of it. No one got it. Second down throw for Winston. And he's able to bring it up five yards shy of midfield to the 45-yard line. And Brandon, this is a real nice job defensively of getting inside a quarterback's head and figuring out, okay, where is he going with the football? Because you can make an educated guess defensively, not all the time, but sometimes. And when you're right, you've got a decent chance of coming away with the football. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. Every year I go to the combine and marvel at the speeds that linebackers are running nowadays. They run like DBs. And let's face it, they know how to finish plays, too. Eyes up, head up, run right through them. The fake to Howard, now Glennon. And that is incomplete. Let's face it, you can run the route tree as many times as you want, get in sync, practice it, do all those things. But once you get to game speed, it doesn't always time up quite that well. That one goes incomplete. Yeah, the box with an extra defender in the secondary now on third down. Let's go! Green, 39! Green, 39! They'll drop to throw. And down he goes, a Buccaneer sack. Gerald McCoy in there to drop him for a four-yard loss, and it'll be fourth down. Gerald McCoy's game just translates no matter who is calling the defenses and what defense he lines up in. Inside, outside, his ability to rush the passers is just significant for Tampa Bay. O'Donnell, he's on to punt as he gets this one away. And this one hits at the one, continues on into the end zone for a touchback. So out come the Bucks now. That opening drive ended with the INT. It didn't lead to points, but still not the way they were hoping to begin the game. But how about going and telling your defense, thank you, a huge thank you. You said it didn't lead to points, stalled off that drive. Now they've got a chance to redeem themselves and maybe reward their defense a little bit by putting some points on the board on this one. 
Trying to shake off the interception. He'll look to throw. And able to get this across the 20 before going out of bounds. The completion good for three, and it's second down. I do have to admit, I like it when it all comes together. When the top part, catching the football, right, whether you're catching it with your hands or cradling it, comes together with the legs, in this case the feet, doing a little toe tap to stay in bounds and complete the catch. And a great job by our crew on the camera shot. Love when you see the grass or on the field turf, those rubber pellets flying up. Great catch. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. This team is not going to make it easy for you. They're a physical group, and we just saw it there on that play. They came in, made the contact, just as he's trying to haul it in. On third down, Winston. And this is going to be incomplete. Let's face it, perfection is something we all chase, whether it's playing this game or whatever we do. Hard to attain, but that's what they were searching for as that pass goes incomplete. Now the six-year man from Cal, Brian Anger, on to kick. Deontay Thompson deep for Chicago. yards that time on the return and the Bears take over here's the Chicago offense coming back out onto the field and last drive three and out still a goose egg on the scoreboard how do they break that goose egg it got to find a way to get the ball in the hands of their playmakers get them some space and try and make a first down and get some momentum going it's been a struggle for them throughout the game and that three and out on the last possession that told you just how stalled they are on offense. So who will step up here? We'll see. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's right. And he's taken down, but not before he gets this into enemy territory across the 40. So the defense blitzed. A nice job picking that up, completing the pass. And how in sync was the quarterback in his center on that play? They saw the blitz made the appropriate calls, got the line engaged because now they know there are going to be extra guys coming at the quarterback, so they got their assignments down pat and kept them away from him, and he's able to step up in the pocket and fire one now for a really good strike. A really nice pickup of 14 yards, and it moves the sticks. And there's a completion to the tight end, and look at the size of these players nowadays. At that spot, 6'4", six, 6'5", six, and up, a lot of guys used to be basketball players, somehow came back to football. That's really good for the game of football. You're getting better athleticism, great hand-eye coordination. Guys who know how to control their bodies when they run their routes. Now Howard. Open space inside the 10. That's good for 21 yards and a first down. I think they like this drive a little bit better there, partner. Running game helping out, picking up some of the slack. Because remember the last drive, they went three and out. So after that big play, let's see if they can catch their defense maybe on their heels. All right, here we go. Green, 39. Ah! On first and goal, Howard. And he goes backwards on this one. Losing yardage to the seven. The loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. Well, sometimes a tough game to figure out. One play, he looks so good, and then the next play, so bad, going backwards. Yeah, in a span of two plays, you go from hero to goat, right, to use one of the cliches. But I think what often happens is you have a big run, and sometimes you try to do too much with your next one. This is Howard on second down, and he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. Give him right around four on the carry. We'll see if they want to keep pounding here on third and goal. And, Brad, they went to a nickel defense, and that's a surprise this close to the goal line because ordinarily you use the back end of the end zone, the sidelines as extra defenders, and you want bigger people on the field to try and help against the run. Right, here we go. Three, 19. They'll look to run with Langford, and he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Bears. 
Jeremy Langford taking it in from two yards out. And the Bears have taken the early lead. Well, they decided to run it in and got it done on third and goal. A lot of times, that's a passing play. And the kicker just has to come out for the PAT. He can breathe a sigh of relief as well, right? Although I don't know if he's really breathing a sigh of relief. I think he likes to put three points on his ledger. now to kick this one away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And he'll get it up to about the 26-yard line just across the 25. And the Buccaneers getting ready to go as they take the field. And the results for them have not been strong to this point. Two drives have ended in a turnover and then a punt. So would it be too snarky for me to say that they've shown improvement? Because you had two, <laughs> two drives with turnovers. Now they punted it away, so at least they didn't turn it over. So that's good, right? You're going to get some angry users <laughs> reaching out to you on social media. Well, I don't mean to be. I was actually looking for the positive. Silver lining, you know. Jameis to throw it. He's got the hook up here to Deshaun Jackson. And they're going to get this one all the way out across the 45. And a nice gain of 21 yards. Okay, what can't Deshaun Jackson do? All right, we know about the catches. We just saw another one there. Also gets involved in the return game. And he can break big plays like that. We've seen him do it throughout his NFL career. We have. What are you, are you thinking of anything in particular? Yeah, I'm, I'm still remembering a certain Giants punter <laughs> not following orders. And Deshaun Jackson made that big time return all the way back for a game winner in that one. I still remember seeing the looks of disbelief on the Giants sideline. We've seen quite a bit of the short passing game here early on first quarter, haven't we? We have, and I think it works a couple of ways for, for this team because, number one, you throw the short game until they stop it. And if they're not going to stop it, you keep throwing it, and occasionally you'll break a tackle and turn into a bigger game. Also, if they start to creep up, start to pressure receivers, now you go over the top, take it deep, and now you get some of those big shots downfield. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. We'll put a check mark in the box where the defense coordinator was saying, how well can we stay with these receivers if we're in man coverage? Because he just did it on that one. Force the incompletion. That allowed him to get bolder with his pass rush, won't it? Absolutely. Frees up your guys elsewhere. <laughs> to the air again with Winston. Complete. He finds Bray. And a big hit there as he runs into a brick wall at the 32-yard line. That one good for 16, and the drive will continue. When we talk about Harvard, you know we're going to talk about academics, but in this case, let's talk about a big year Cameron Braid had in 2016, the tight end. Finished with 57 catches, 660 yards, and also eight scores. Sims. And able to push his way forward here for a good little game. It's a six-yard pickup, but it gets him to second and four. And there's a run to be happy with. Good, solid yardage. He'll take that any time you hand the ball to a back. Back now with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. It's the Bucks in possession of the football as we begin the second quarter. They've got it second and four to start things out. Again, they run with Sims. And give him about three as he gets it down to the 22-yard line. Well, he hasn't made much of an impact in the running game thus far. And after that last run... Not much is going to change in that area. He hasn't been able to get anything going, and really the offensive line not helping him much. The offense on third down tonight, they've been okay. Two for three thus far. They're looking at third and a few inches. To throw is Winston. He 
he's just going to dump this one off to his fullback out of the backfield. And he takes it down to the 13 and picks up the first. They get nine out of that one, and as a result, the drive continues. three yard line it'll be a pickup of 10 yards and that'll make it second and a foot or so not an ideal spot to be on first down but I love that the play caller did not immediately abandon the running game and say okay we've got to throw it in order to pick it up stayed with the run was rewarded with a big time pickup now they're in second and manageable second down Winston under a heavy and down he goes. Lamar Houston coming in hard on the blitz. He gets him down for a loss of four. Well, that play was the very definition of fast, quick, and in a hurry. Suddenly, he was there. Yeah, blink of an eye. That happened fast and a big sack. The Bucks on third down. They've been good. Three for four thus far. This will be third and five. Working out of the gun. Winston. And that is incomplete. I tell you, Brandon, this defense is playing with some confidence. Haven't allowed a point yet. Flying to the football. I'm telling you, it's almost 11 to the ball on every snap. Another nice job there to force an incompletion. Roberto Aguayo out now for the Buccaneer field goal try. This from 25 yards out. And Aguayo able to knock it through. Still trailing, it's seven to three. And that field goal caps an 11 play drive. That's a lot of offense to run to only get three points, but they'll take them. Anytime you can put anything on the board, you run to your sideline somewhat happy. Roberto Aguayo following the made field goal, set now to kick this one away. Fielded about a yard deep. And the decision to bring it out is going to cost him about seven yards all told as he's taken down back shy of the 20. The Bears offense now gets set to head back onto the field. And for them, a touchdown their last go around. Obviously, they'll be hoping to do that again. And when you start plotting for this drive, when you start thinking to yourself, okay, what are we going to do? You don't go away from what you did before because that worked, but you have to be prepared for wrinkles and counters because you know they'll make some adjustments. On play action, they'll throw. Miller on the catch over the middle. Ten yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. Seeing that play and understanding just how tough it is to cover tight ends, especially the ones running around the NFL nowadays, makes me glad I didn't make it in that league. I would have had a really difficult time. But now you get to sit up here with me. Yeah, and that's fun, isn't it? <laughs> and what a really nice game right there on first down for them. Brings up a nice second down right, for them. They'll look to throw here. And this one is incomplete. He was looking for the tight end, Adam Shaheen, that time. Third down here. And you just know when that play call came in, their eyes lit up because anytime you get a chance to take a big shot downfield, that's a lot of fun, and they missed an opportunity. The Bears on third down, just one for three thus far. They're looking at third in the nose of the football. to throw here he's going to find his running back it's complete and he's going to have a first down as he's brought down at the 44 yard line and give him 17 yards that time as that'll move the chains so many times you hear today's NFL described as a space game get your best players into space with the football in their hands that's why sometimes you swing it out to your runner Get him out in the flat and let him have a chance to make people miss an open field. Back to throw. And they're not able to hook up there. Incomplete. 
Well, not to get too overcritical there because he knows what he's doing, but his shoulders looked a little off kilter there when he threw that. I don't think you're being overly critical there. You're just analyzing it, and he gets those shoulders right. That pass will go from incomplete to complete. Second down following the incompletion. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he's got this one just across midfield to the 49. Second down, a little more productive than first. Seven yards on the gain. It gets him to third and three now. Well, this play sequence was really kind of called in reverse. Incomplete pass on first and 10. Nice run on second and 10 when probably everyone was expecting them to throw the football. Now, if you're the defense, what are they going to do on third down? You're a little off balance. Back to the ground, this time Langford. And that play will go nowhere. Losing yardage back near midfield at the 49. It'll wind up being a loss of two. And that's going to bring up a fourth down. They tried to run right into the teeth of the defense on third down, but um, looked like those teeth were pretty sharp. <laughs> <laughs> they were having absolutely none of it stuffed them for a loss. Yeah, couldn't get any leverage up front and move people aside in order to run the ball. And the kick's away as he angles this one for the sideline. And no return here. Where will they spot it? They say just outside the 20-yard line. Now the Buccaneer offense set to take over again. And they had three points last time, but they didn't want three points because they were well within range of scoring a touchdown. We'll see if they can do better now. I'm with you on that one. Let's just go ahead and be frank about the whole thing. The only one happy about the three-point kicker. Exactly. <laughs> he put it through the post. That's going to help him at contract time. But that offense, they're thinking, let's get in the end zone this time. I don't know if that helped him at contract time. You, you could have kicked that one through. I don't know about that. <laughs> toe bash. I don't know about toe that. Bashed it. <laughs> Super toe <laughs> now the Buccaneer offense gets set to take over. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember, they did put points on yeah, the board. Three and, points is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. <laughs> the play fake to Sims. Now Winston. And they're going to get this one all the way out across the 45. The good pick up there of 20 yards. One thing I can say pretty safely, that route is not called if you don't have a guy who can throw the ball and put some mustard on it. Because if you're going to lollipop it in the middle of the field, bad things usually happen. It takes a strong-armed guy who can rifle it in there, and they were able to successfully complete that one. Now Sims. Pushing forward for three up to the 48. Not much happening there on first down. I thought there might have been a hole for a split second. Yeah, but it dried up pretty quickly, didn't it? Closed fast. footwork and then hit and drop shy of the 45. That's going to be a six-yard gain. It leaves him with third down and just a yard to go. Getting out a ton of success here so far, but you get the feeling that he might be on the verge of popping one? Yeah, even on that one, there was a little bit of a hole, but it closed there quickly at the end. The Bucks on third down. They've converted three out of five thus far. They need just a yard here. It's third and one. And they'll let their fullback try and push the pile. And he's going to have a first down as he's brought down at the 44-yard line. They only get two there, but on third and one, that's all they needed to keep the drive going. carry here for Jaquiz Rogers. He fights forward for a couple with a penalty flag down. And the linemen, they're already walking back. That hold coming from the middle of the line, the center. And it's difficult for him because sometimes you've got people right over you and as soon as you snap it, trying to get your hands up and block them, you can be a little bit late getting it done. Now Rodgers. 
And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. Give him five yards there, and it'll bring up second down. Frustrating for a defense, energizing for an offense. Finding a way to create that type of yardage in your running game, that'll make the guys carrying the ball very, very happy. stopped immediately there so that flag will cost him 15 and it doesn't matter anymore how you get the face mask any part of it that's going to be 15 yards Sims and he'll get a little over two maybe a full three down to the 32 yard line well he was looking for some running room and there wasn't a whole lot of it there on that play I think he was lucky to get a couple of yards out of it because those defenders they were rallying to the football pretty quickly is Rodgers and he is met at the line of scrimmage and he goes down right there officially no gain on the play and they're left with a third and eight well a well executed blitz no doubt great job by the linebacker maybe the quarterback if he could have seen that could have audible there yeah he needed to be in a different play because that one just meshed perfectly for the defense all the gaps were filled except for the one the offense really wanted to run through and that was filled by a big man wanting to make a tackle and he made a great tackle now Winston. Oh, he's got a little daylight. And he's going to get the first down here as he's taken down at the 22. A nice pick up there, 10 yards, and it'll move the sticks. Winston. And he goes out of bounds inside the 10 at the 9. Another nice gain. 13 yards that time and another first down. On draft night, I kept wondering, why is O.J. Howard still on the board? And he ended out at Tampa at number 19, and they're ecstatic to have this guy who ran 4-5-1. Actually, the first time that the Bucks have ever drafted a tight end in round number one, and they got a good one. Winston. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Oh, just play after play after play on this long drive for the offense. And looked like some movement there. Let's get the call. And that'll set them back five. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. And now it's second and goal. They'll run it now out of the gun. Even with that broken tackle, he'll be brought down short of the 15. It'll be a gain of four, but it'll bring us now to a third and goal.
And this offense on third down today, they've been very good. Five for seven thus far. They're looking at a third and goal here. From the shotgun, it's Winston. It's caught, Humphreys. And here he'll get it down to the seven. Now the Bears electing to call a timeout defensively. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. Roberto Aguayo out now for the Buccaneer field goal try. From the left hash, should be a fairly easy one here. And Aguayo's kick is good. And they'll get it back within a point at 7-6. to six. So they get three. They were hoping for six. An unlucky number 13 play drive. Well, you go to the sideline after putting three points on the board. Happy. But you wanted to be ecstatic. You wanted to have six on the board. On the opposite sideline, though, the defense, I think they're high-fiving each other, only giving up three after letting them run that much offense. Roberto Aguayo following the made field goal, set now to kick this one away. Now the Bears offense ready to take over again. They're out in front. Last time they had to punt it away. We'll see if they can add to their lead now. They don't want to go out and, and punt it away again. This team now wants to get a cushion, put people away. They want to run their offense and have it end up in the end zone. Here we go now. Now Glennon. Out on the right. This is Cruz. Five yards on the catch there. Brings up second down. Glennon finding Miller there for a Chicago first down. Many different ways to create space, but on that play, he did it with that big, wide body of his. Didn't get a whole lot of yardage on the play, but it did what it was supposed to, pick up a first down. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. Offense comes to the line now, first and ten. Right, here we go. Green, 39. They'll look to throw. Toward the sideline, and look at that catch. Dragging the toes, and that's going to be a first down. Well done. That one goes for 24 yards. Let's make this one simple. What a catch, especially the finishing part of getting his feet in bounds, toe tapping, and of course, foot dragging. A little tapestry, if you will. Oh, I like it. Now a play fake here on first down. Looking right sideline, but it's incomplete. Kendall Wright, the intended target, and it's second down. Had an open man that time, but ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely, just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. Unable to connect on the first down pass play. Now it's second down. He'll drop to throw. Oh, the Buccaneer pressure too much. Down he goes. Robert Ayers. 
in there to bring him down for a loss of seven. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. And that is incomplete. 16 seconds now on the clock. That's very well timed there defensively because it's not a bad throw, but the collision came at the exact time he was reaching to bring in the football. Really, really well done. Decent offense, just better defense. I think you're right. Here's Pat O'Donnell now as he's on to punt for Chicago. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. And this will be out of bounds, and they spot it at the 15-yard at the line. Not too bad. Here comes the Tampa Bay offense now heading back out onto the field. And the ball backed way up. So thinking with this amount of time on the clock, probably just sit on it, and we'll see these two teams go to the lockers. Yeah, I don't think you want to overthink it in this situation. Either side of the ball. Just go ahead and finish up the half and get on out and talk about it. Ready. And the drive begins here with Sims. Two spins and an alley to run. He's at the 50 and all the way to the opposite 45. Officials so cognizant of that call nowadays, but that would look pretty easy. Yeah, you're right. They took out of their hands having to wonder whether it's a five yard or a 15 yard inadvertent or not. Now it's a lot easier. You see it, you call it. So with two ticks left here in the half, on is the field goal unit. It'll come from the right hash. It's a 47-yard attempt. And that is not going to get there. Oh, he missed it short. It's no good. So we reach halftime with the visiting Bears out on top here. As we send you cross state to Orlando to check in with Larry Ridley, he's got our EA Sports halftime report. That'll be taken in the end zone. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. On first and 10, Winston. And Boyd has it over the middle. And a good stiff arm there before he's brought down on a nice little game. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. They gave up the completion there, but this is what zone defenses count on. Catching the ball and not much run after the catch. Now they run with Sims. And he'll get it out near the 40 to the 39. It'll go as a gain of six that time, and it moves the chains as well. Second and two is prime time for a little bit of a gamble, isn't it? Open up the playbook. Go play action. Toss that bad boy deep. But in this situation, go ahead and give it to your back. Let him pick up a first down. Keep the sticks moving. Jameis now on first down. It's caught by Mike Evans. Ten yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. Are we really in the second half here? And this is the first time we've seen Jameis Winston connect with Mike Evans? Yeah, you know that they missed that in the first half. Up until this point, they really missed it, haven't they? I think that's a big reason why they're down on the scoreboard right now. Now a handoff here to his running back. Room to run inside the 40. 17 yards on the pickup there, and the drive will continue. Boy, where would these guys be without his performance on the ground? That puts him over 100 yards now for the afternoon, and I tell you, he seems to be getting stronger as the day goes along. So it'll be first down here after the run. To throw, Winston. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. 
A pretty good coverage there, and both of these defenses, they've had good coverage throughout this one. No doubt about it, and in today's NFL, where we're used to a bit more scoring, this feels almost like a well-pitched game in baseball on both sides where the tension continues to build. Who's going to make the big play? A second down throw for Winston. And this time he's got the hookup. It's complete. And he's going to get this down near the 20-yard line. The Buccaneer first, Winston DeBrate. Partners, a lot of fun watching the NFL now, isn't it? Because when the big fellow runs routes, it used to be when we were kids, he'd run about three different routes, and that was it. Now he can run anything and catch the balls we just saw there. On first down, they'll run it on the draw play. And able to fight forward inside the 15 to the 13. A good run there on first down, and it'll leave them with a second and two. That's a strong pickup right there on first down, and as this drive goes on, we're seeing an offensive line and running game imposing its will. Red zone opportunity. time to the tailback and for one of the few times here today this run's not going to go anywhere he got maybe a half yard at most but officially they'll be left with a third and two and there's a nice stop for the defense they've had a tough time containing this guy all game long but maybe they can build a little bit off of that play a little bit of confidence a little bit of momentum yeah every now and then you can actually tackle that guy on third down that's Rodgers. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. A lot depend on the spot there, and he got it, but it wasn't by much, was it? I remember Coach Madden talking about, depending on which foot the official used, that would tell you whether you had the first down or not. You want that upfield threat to be the one that spots the ball, don't you? And you and I have the luxury of a couple extra views here in the booth, and he did get it, but not by much. So now it's first and goal. Another carry now for Rodgers. And this one will wind up with him losing yardage back to the four-yard line. That'll set him back with a loss of three on the play. And that'll make it second and goal. Long drive. The defense just cannot seem to catch a break and get off the field. Second and goal to go now. They'll run it now out of the gun. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. Call it a loss of two on the play. And that's going to bring up an interesting third and goal. Contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. The strong windows get a lot tighter near the end zone, don't they? And here's the thing. You already probably have three points in your hip pocket. You force a throw here and give up an interception, you come away with nothing. Especially tough in the middle third of the field where he threw that one. third quarter. So all nine points for him coming via the field goal and this last one puts him out in front. And all these field goals are great, but it's touchdowns that win games for you in the NFL. So you just wonder if settling for three on some of these drives is going to come back to haunt him. Roberto Aguayo following the made field goal set now to kick this one away. That's fielded in the end zone. And he'll make it across the 20 as his guys will set up shot at the 23-yard line. Now we take a glance at the offense as they work their way back out for their first possession of the second half. They're down in this game. A chance for the offense, though, to put something on the board, get some momentum here in half two. 
try and get things kick-started for them. And you know at the half, they discussed how they were going to get that done. This is where scripting comes into play a lot how, of the time. How many time. plays do you script coming out of the most, most of the time in the first half, you're scripting 12 to 16. I think in the second half, you're really scripting more like 8 to 10. Kind of a starter or an opener, whatever, they, whatever terminology they use. Just something to get you off to a quick start. This is what happens sometimes when you abandon the running game. It's hard to get back to it because once guys get out of that mentality of firing out and hitting people, hard to get them started again occasionally. Looking to throw. Over the middle, that's caught by Meredith. And they're going to get this one all the way out across the 45. And a nice gain of 21 yards. Well, clearly one of his advantages as a passer is his height, sit back in the pocket, fired over the middle. That makes things tougher defensively, doesn't it? It really does because your goal is to move the quarterback off his initial spot when he gets his drop back completed. But when you have that type of height, he can stay in there. If he's willing to take the hits and just fire over the top, which saves him time and actually completes a play a little bit quicker than it normally does for a quarterback has to slide and find open space to throw. I like what they tried to do there. They didn't get a completed pass downfield, but they came off of a momentum play. Big time gain on the previous snap, came right back and threw one deep, hoping to catch them on their heels. He'll try again with the arm here on second down. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Cameron Meredith, the intended target, and it's third down. Sometimes the coverage is so good, no matter what you're doing on offense, you just can't shake anyone free. They try their best to find someone open, but they took away every passing alley, every angle, and shut the play down. The Bears on third down. They've converted just two for six thus far. This is third and ten. They'll set up a throw. And that's incomplete. And we're into the second half now. And this is an offense that continues to struggle to sustain a drive. Looks like they're just totally out of sync, whether they're running the ball, passing the ball like we saw there. I don't know. The rhythm seems off. Here's Pat O'Donnell now as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. This is away and a very good kick angled for the sidelines. And now where will the side judge stop his walk? That's the question. He says it crossed out of bounds at about the 17-yard line. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. And they're not going to play this conservative, I don't think. They had the field goal last time, and they're up, but they're looking to put a drive in the end zone. Oh, I agree with you totally. No one is, goes out on the field and says, all right, let's just settle for three, except in certain situations, trying to ice a game, that sort of deal. Most of the time, it's end zone, and that's what you're thinking, and I believe that's exactly what they're thinking as they begin this one. Yeah, no quarterback ever goes out there saying, hey, let's get three, right? <laughs> not one that I've ever met. Seven yards on to pick up there and it'll leave them with a second and three well no matter how they phrase it staying on schedule staying ahead of the sticks whatever you want to call it seven yards on first down that fits the bill on second down they'll try and run the counter nowhere to go that time might have gotten a yard up to the 25 Let's give a lot of credit to the offensive line. They've been able to move the ball really well on the ground the entire game, and while that wasn't a huge one, that's okay. They'll take them in short, steady bursts. The Bucks on third down. They're hitting at 60%, six out of 10 thus far. This time, it's third and three. On the give, this is their fullback, and he'll get this one up to the 26. Just a yard on the run there, and that's going to bring us to a fourth down. Came up about a yard short, but I can't help it, Brandon. I love it when the big guy gets the football and he tries to battle his way forward. There's something about those guys carrying the ball and watching people trying to stop them. That's just great theater. Here's Brian Anger now. On for his second punt. He'd take a repeat of his first. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. 
And he'll get credit for putting him inside the 20 as the fair catch is made right at about the 19-yard line. Onto the field now come the Bears. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. Well, you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times the punter goes to the sideline and puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. They go with Howard to begin the drive. Big hold of the 30. He's at the 50. The 30, 20, 10, touchdown, Chicago. Jordan Howard, 81 yards, and the Bears are in for six. And that run massively increased his production in this game, and now he's over 100 yards. And break out your calculator, partner, because his yards per carry went up it's significantly, skyrocket. right? Big time jaunt all the way to the end zone. Barth now to kick this one away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And he'll elect not to return this one, so they'll bring it out to the 25 on the touchback. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now, with the game this close, You've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. They go play action here on first down. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. So it can't hang on, and as I watch that unfold, I remembered an expression that I've heard, maybe from you, I don't know, but you're going to get hit anyways, might as well hold on to the ball. All right, you know a coach <laughs> said that, right? Yeah. Not an actual player? Not a no chance at all. Way easier said than done. Let now. On second down, Winston again. And he comes back with one complete. And he's able to get out to the 32, brought down there. The reception good for seven. It's third down. Let's not quibble about the game there on second down. That was a positive play because that was a take what you can guess situation. Got out to the tight end. Now it gives them a much better opportunity to convert on third down. The Bucks on third down. They've converted six times and could use a seventh here. Here it's third and three. Winston. Complete. He finds Bray. And he's got the first before he's brought down at the 39-yard line. Call it a gain of seven, and it gets him a new set of downs. of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. I don't know about you, partner, but I'm rubbing my eyes after that play. Did we just see that runner not get yardage? A big-time play by the defense. It does happen occasionally, even against the best running backs who are having big days. He'll be stopped shy of the 45 despite a great move. Call it a gain of four, and it'll leave him with a third down and six to go. On a second and long, it's really nice to see an offense that has enough confidence to run the football in that situation. I think that goes back to their practice and game planning. They've seen things that they've seen on tape and in previous games that led them to believe that even in a long-distance situation, they can still run the football and gain enough yardage to put themselves in a good spot on third down. Jameis to throw it. He's got Evans. And he will have a first down here at about the 40. 
17 yards on the pickup there. The drive will continue. It's a first down. And here comes play number six on this drive. Play fake. Winston. Left side here. That's complete to Godwin. And he's going to get this one down right to the edge of the red zone of the chalk of the 20. Chewing up big yardage. Another nice gain there. This one goes for 20. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as, I can do it, so it's not that big of a deal to me. I'm going to keep firing. From the red zone now, Winston. That's going to be caught at the 10-yard line. And able to get him down, but he does reach the five. 15 more there, and they're on a roll. It's another first down. How about the timing on that one? Boy, they were in sync, weren't they? Three-step drop, balls out of his hands, right to the tight end. Nice completion, just like they do it in practice. Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit him, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. Jameis again. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Lamar Houston. From his outside linebacker spot, he comes up to drop him for a loss of 10. Now Jameis on second down. This will be caught at about the five. And he'll be brought down here at the three-yard line. A nice job to get 11 out of that pass play, but now they face a third and goal. For young quarterbacks, having that primary target's a big deal, and Mike Evans serves as that for Jameis Winston. Evans led the league in targets in 2016. That went after him a ton. He also was six in catches, fourth in yards, and tied for second in touchdowns. And played in his first Pro Bowl. To throw is Winston. A short game was all he needed. He gets across the chalk for six. And that touchdown ends a streak, for lack of a better word, of three field goals that they put on the board previously. They finally cracked the code. Yeah, they've been down there. They've been in enemy territory, as you said. They just haven't been able to punch it in until that point. All right, now a big two-point conversion attempt still to come. Winston. Try to lob it in there, but it's incomplete. I think we can figure out why they went for two there, right? Up one, you want to make it a field goal difference if at all possible. They didn't get it. Now they've got to play some defense down the stretch. Yeah, not much margin for error now for your D. They just have to get it into range. The kicker, Roberto Aguayo, has it teed up and is about ready to get this one started. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. The Bears' offense now heading back out onto the field, and they hit the home run last drive. One play on the ground all the way to the house. Now the defense, maybe they're expecting a run here. Partner, I love your description because when we talk about hitting the home run, we're usually thinking about a passing play, aren't we? Something in the air, deep ball. But how about them just taking it? Big time jaunt. Now if you're coming back out, now they've established this run game, the play action pass could very well be open. Incomplete. Ten yards still left on second down. Now Glennon. Got his man complete over the middle. That's Howard. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. A big run there. 29 yards and a first. 
And at this stage, down in the second half, looks like they just wanted to find a way to get it in the hands of their playmaker, and they did. I think you're exactly right. I don't think the coordinator's looking at his play sheet and trying to figure out which play will work well. He's trying to figure out how to get the ball to the playmaker that you just described. Looking down at that sheet, you find people plays, not necessarily X's and O's, and that's exactly what they did there. Wright's got it, and he'll be taken down, but not before getting this inside the 30. Chewing up big yardage, another nice gain there. This one goes for 20. So after that big gain, let's see what else the offense has up its sleeve. His throw caught at about the five. 23 yards on the play. Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit them, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. They'll let the fullback try and take him home. And he'll get into the end zone. Touchdown, Chicago. It's the fullback taking it in from two yards out. And the Bears have taken the lead here in the fourth quarter. And they just powered it in right there, Charles. Three tight ends out on the field. The fullbacks for the defense, they knew what was coming. They knew, but they weren't able to stop them. They knew they had to meet them with a little bit of force. But on that play... The big guys up front won the day. Running with Howard. And he's not even going to get back to the line of scrimmage. You know, sometimes the guy on the defensive side of the ball, he just has a good feeling or a good read, and he unleashed his defense on that one. Boy, they stopped him in a big way. Yeah, I hate to be cliche, but sometimes we overanalyze. They just have more want. Looked like they had more <laughs> want right there. More want and more people to the ball. now to kick this one away. On the return, it's Ryan Smith. And he'll take this across the 25. Couple extra yards up to the 27-yard line. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. And his throw is incomplete. Mike Evans, the one he was looking for. And now it's second down. A little too much oomph, too much mustard there on that pass. They really turned it loose, didn't they? Really cut loose with that one. Sharp, strong. Didn't lead to a completion, though. Made it very difficult. on second and ten. Right side caught by Jackson. The reception good for seven. It's third down. Some think the teams really won't throw a slant route unless you have a receiver that has a lot of stature to him. But sometimes the little guys, they get lost in there. People can't really locate them and they run that quick cut on the slant and oftentimes they can turn it into big plays. Third and short yardage, Winston. And it falls incomplete after almost being intercepted. A pick there would have been great. The good news for the defense now, it's fourth down. I guess they're in a situation now, fourth quarter, where they're forced to take some chances, but I don't know that that was the type of a chance you want to take. And that one could very easily have been intercepted. And if it does get picked off, that could possibly seal this one. Anger is on to punt, and he gets this one away. And a great job here. This is going to turn out to be a beauty. This is marked down at about the three-yard line. The Bears offense now getting ready to take over. Very 
very tough spot here for the offense to start. They'll begin the drive with Howard. And he's going to have just a couple here with a marker on the field as well. The decision is to decline it and not give him the down back. They might as well have sent a skywriter above the stadium saying, we don't think you can get the first down against our defense by that decision. And they still need eight yards for the first here on second down. Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. That would have been a great catch, but it's real difficult to hold on to it because it was contested all the way. Would have been a great play if he'd been able to haul that one in. The Bears on third down, lacking much success, just two for seven to this point. This is third and eight. Right, here we go. Blue Back to throw here. And incomplete here on third down. The positioning here is key. As a defensive back, you're taught 99% of the time to make a play on the football. But in this case, making a play on the man was all the difference. That's what forced the incompletion. Here's Pat O'Donnell now, as he's on for the fifth time here today. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. <laughs> well, that'll be put in the books as a 53-yard punt. And the Bucs will get ready to go on offense. Now the Buccaneers offense gets ready to head back onto the field. And they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you've called before, realize it hasn't worked <laughs> go to so something well, else. and maybe try and find one of those special plays from one of your better players, and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area. He's going to float this one deep right side. And that one falls incomplete. Looked like he might have had position there, but he couldn't hold on in its second down. There's definitely contact there, but it's the fourth quarter of a kind of tight game, and sometimes the officials just say, let them play. Kind of like your mom used to do, you and your brothers, just take the broom tea and send you out to your backyard and tell you to settle it yourselves. <laughs> I like that, yeah. There was contact. I don't know, like you said, enough to warrant the flag. It was close, though. Second down, Winston. He hits Rodgers in the flat. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. They pick up 12 on the play there, and they move the chains. Good route, good pickup for first down yardage, and that is a tough one to cover, the angle route, because a running back getting out of the backfield, if you're trying to cover that, especially if you're in the linebacker spot and you're seeing this play develop, he heads out towards the flat first, and that often gets you to overcommit running in that direction. Then he cuts back up inside you into the middle of the field. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Pernell McPhee in from his linebacker's spot. He's able to drop him for a loss of about 10. Now a second down throw for Winston. And he's going to go down again. Eddie Goldman in there to drop him. And sacks on first and second downs are going to lead to a third and long. Brandon, I think you understand the type of afternoon this offensive line is having. It is a long one for them. Long for you to spend it with me. Long for them trying to block those guys. They've given up a whole lot of sacks. And the speed and quickness of that defensive line is eating them alive. Third and long for Winston. To the sideline, and that is a heck of a catch as he was able to get both feet in. A crazy sequence here. A huge gain that time, but it still leaves him well short for fourth down. 
He's been a busy man here in this one, and they're showing off some nice footwork to stay in bounds. And with those types of catches and the volume that we've seen in this game, wouldn't you keep him busy as well? I would. Of course. you got to <laughs> keep throwing it to him. He keeps making plays. On fourth down, the punt team is on as this is sent away. And this is going to be ruled out, I think, just inside the 20. Yes, it will. Side judge calls it at the 19-yard line. And now Chicago getting ready to go as they take the field. And on the last go around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. And he'll get this one across the 20, but only up to about the 21. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. Brand is all about pace and tempo now for them. They've got the advantage, so I'm going to put musical terms for you. You don't want to go prestissimo. That's too quick, too lively, right? But you also don't want to slow it down too much. You don't want to go lenta. What you really want to be is moderato. Uh, nice and even, uh, nice and steady. Get those gains and close out the game. I think that chicken parm from last night's gone to your head. <laughs> And he'll be taken down here at about the 23-yard line. Call it a gain of a couple, and that's going to leave him with a third and about five. The fourth quarter here, they've got the lead. They want to keep it on the ground. That's what they're doing. Smart football. Keep the clock grinding. Keep it going. But you got to figure now, they're going to see more people stacked up in the line of scrimmage as they try and bleed it out. Out of the gun now on third down. The catch made by Miller. And he's able to get it to the 33. Good enough for a first down. Give him 10 yards on that one, and that'll earn him a fresh set of downs. So the offense has it first and 10. Glennon hands this one to Howard. And now running right through it. And he's brought down, but not before a really nice stiff arm to create a little space. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven leaves him with a second and three. Well, at this stage, that's exactly what you want offensively. Good run on first down. Stay in bounds. Keep that clock rolling. And look at that play chart that the play caller has in his hands right now. That's what you got to focus in on because... That's divided up by sections. And right now, he's looking at that four-minute offense section. What running plays do we have to bleed down the clock and take care of the football? Right now, they're executing really well. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. It's a 10-yard pickup, and it moves the chains. So they're leading. They have possession of the football, and certainly... This is where they just want to milk the clock. This is Langford on first and 10. And he'll get this down only to about the 46. A gain of three, second down. And in this situation with the lead fourth quarter, they're liking keeping the ball on the ground, I'm sure. That's just smart football, but you know the defense has to know it as well. They've got to stop them here. So now we're going to see that loading the box in a big way. Six, seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take. Puts a little bit more pressure on your big offensive line. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage, look defensively. Green, 39. Green, 39. They run with Howard. And he'll get it inside the 40 to the 39. So fresh out of the two-minute warning, and here's another timeout taken with 1.55 remaining. So here we go, first and 10 now. All right, here we go. Three, 19. Three, 19. 
Again, it's Howard. And a short gain there down to the 37-yard line. And now with 1.52 to go, we get another pause in the action. A timeout here defensively. Second down, nine yards to go. This is Howard. And a short gain there down to the 37-yard line. And now we're going to get a timeout here called by the defense. It'll be their third and final timeout, so as they talk things over, we'll step aside. six but now it's fourth down and once again leverage wins the offensive line lower than the defensive front they moved them and found some good space for the guy carrying the ball so on fourth down out trots the kicker in a big spot here this one from 48 yards away oh they get to the football it's blocked now it's scooped up and this is a live football and tampa bay trots out there now but when it all comes together and you get the field goal block that's been designed, that's been drawn up, everyone has to feel good about on that side of the ball. How about that one there? To the left side, knew what they had. That's where they wanted to be. And they got their designated guy turned free. And he's taken down, but not before he gets this into enemy territory across the 40. 23 yards on the play. And yeah, with the clock ticking under 50 seconds now, he spikes it. throw deep downfield so the long attempt falls innocently to the ground and it brings up third so he's unable to complete it there and just not the game that you would expect from him he's been off the mark really start to finish yeah, it makes you wonder what exactly is going on is he a little bit dinged up here or is he just off just by a bit maybe he can get it back in this situation he'll need to back to throw He's going to let it fly. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. These are the spots, this stage of the game, where it pays to have speed on the perimeter, doesn't it? It certainly does. And in the second quarter, he may very well have run by him. But in this situation, I know as a defender, I'm loosening up a couple of extra steps that allowed him to run with him stride for stride. Desperation time. Winston on fourth down. Open man is Godwin. It's complete. And he's going to be taken down here with a penalty flag on the field. Well, there have been a ton of sacks. They were just trying to prevent another. So what you're telling me is the conventional way has not really worked for them, huh? Not at all. Not at all. So he tries to grab him here, and they still get caught. And down by five, they've got to go for it here on fourth down. He'll look to throw. And no, it's incomplete. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And it looks like the Bears are going to win the football game. 
And he'll have a tough time living that one down. It's one thing, Charles, to drop a pass. It's quite another to drop it on fourth down. And so many teams work on that in terms of locking in on those key downs. You know, I've seen, you know, you and I have both been to practices where we've seen, hey, third down situation, big third down alert, lock in here, fourth down play, make sure you focus just a little bit extra. It didn't pay off in that situation. National Football League, Charles, you never take that for granted no matter who you're playing, no matter where you're playing. You take it and you run with it. <laughs> and you know you prime the pump all week in your own home facility. No one thinks we can do this. Only people who believe are right here in this room. And then you go on the road, band together, and get it done. So that'll just about do it for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, log on to easports.com. With that, we say so long from Tampa.